I am not exactly where I was destined to be. Call it an unplanned destiny if you wish. That's the taste of my life. However, today, I feel more than ever I'm in the right place. As a child, I had no self-confidence for two reasons. First, I thought I was ugly. As the only black girl of my school, I regularly received racist comments about my physical appearance. Those comments followed me all my schooling, from your skin looks like poo in my childhood to you're pretty for a black girl in my teenage years. Not the best comments to build strong self-confidence. These remarks quickly had consequences on me. I remember that, as a child, I wanted to straighten my hair and bleach my skin. Second reason, I thought I was dumb, because my low esteem killed my intellectual abilities. My family put a lot of pressure on me to excel at everything I did, from sports to school. But being an average student, I was stupid enough to think I have no talent. I was on this distorted self-perception. I have been conditioned to failure. Year after year, as my self-esteem dropped, my grades too. This situation went on until my last year of high school. At that time, something triggered me, and my low self-esteem turned into self-confidence, and I discovered parts of my personality I didn't even know. At that point, after believing I was not pretty my entire childhood, I was selected to take part in the 2020 Miss France competition. And after believing I had no talents, today I write engaged articles, I became an actress, I organized protests gathering thousands of people, and I'm invited today to give a TED talk. I told you seconds ago about something triggered me. After graduating high school, with average grades came summer break. I was off to college, and I had good resolution in mind for the new year to come. So I tried to improve myself, but I didn't know how to proceed. That's when I found a YouTube video of a man named Steve, who told a story about the power of mental conditioning. Steve explained the day a mother brought her son to his fast reading training and taught him. He's a bit stupid, so don't mind if he doesn't understand anything. Steve then decided to condition himself as if this child was gifted. Throughout the week, he talked to him as if he was a genius. He made him feel important. At the end of the week, Steve gave his students a test. He realized that the child obtained the best result ever out of the thousand students he had. Your son had the best result ever, he said to his mother. And do you know what she answered? I don't believe it. Then Steve replied, that's exactly the answer I expected from you. You don't believe it. And since you don't believe in your son, then he can't believe in himself. This video had a powerful impact on me. It restored my self-confidence. I then decided to apply Steve's methods directly on myself. Every day, before going back to college, I convinced myself that I was intelligent and that I had many talents. I conditioned myself to succeed. And you know what? It was a fantastic success. As the weeks went by, my grades improved, and thanks to my positive mental conditioning, I reached the 15th grade point of rage with the compliments of the class council. I then realized that I had abilities I never suspected and that I had to believe in them to give myself the means to succeed to reveal them. Besides my studies, I was very committed on my social networks. I regularly organized debates on political and social issues such as the death penalty, racism, misogyny, and many other topics. So I was thinking about what I wanted to do with my life then, a major event upset me a few weeks after the end of my classes. On May 25th, 2020, media were repeating the same information over and over. George Floyd, a black man, father of five children, was killed in Minneapolis by three police officers during a check. Police officers 
Nelton Floyd's neck for nine minutes while the men repeated over and over, I can't breathe. His death scene touched many hearts across the globe and riots were taking place worldwide, claiming that black lives matter and that justice must be done for the Floyd family. I was very touched by this tragic case. I imagined my father, who could have been in this place as he suffered unjustified violence during a police check in the past. I followed the news from my town closely and saw that many people were talking about George Floyd's death on social media, but that no one was ready to act on it. So I wanted to show actions speak louder than words, by which I called for protests on my Instagram. I still remember a friend telling me the next day, you're never going to make it. There will be 10 people at your demonstration. I doubt it for a moment, but I remembered that I was conditioned to believe in myself, so just to prove to myself that I could do it, I decided not to have a second thought and proceeded further. I got into the organization of a protest while I knew absolutely nothing about it. Very quickly, the movement has grown in ways that completely exceeded my expectations. After only three days on my social networks, 600 people were expected, and I received supporting messages from other countries. I could not believe it. Then came the D-Day. The protest was going to begin on the Niçois Avenue, La Promenade des Anglais. I arrived at the departure, expecting to see 200 people. Well, turned out, the promenade was so full of people, I couldn't see the march's hands. It was impossible to estimate on human terms how many we were, but what was certain was that we were definitely more than 200. And then one thing led to another very quickly. The procession started the march, I gave my speech in a bullhorn, the crowd shouted slogans and demanded justice, and journalists were chasing me. The more the demonstration progressed, the more the crowd grew. The next day, I learned in the media that we were thousands of people. I can't even realize what that means today. After that day, my life took a new turn. By conditioning myself to succeed, I had done it. I had gathered thousands of people for a cause that was close to my heart. I have since created a collective, I am regularly invited to participate in public debates, and I write newspaper articles. And then another thing happened. Because of all this media coverage, I was approached by a member of the Miss France Committee. He encouraged me to give it a try and enter the contest. Since I was a little girl, I admired these women from my television, and I finally found myself in their shoes. Driven by my values, I engaged in the adventure with the primary goal of touching the public through my story and commitments. I was selected and arrived at Miss Côte d'Azur while keeping my committed sight despite the preconceived non-compatibility of Miss France's universe and the militant world. Later, my atypical Miss Activist profile attracted the media and I was invited on a TV show and interviewed by many channels. Today, I'm an actress in a committed short film, and only God knows what's ahead of me. Whatever it is, now I'm confident. Now that you are aware of the tremendous impact your state of mind can have on your actions, let's move on to the practical advices that I have applied myself to have a strong mindset. Let's go back in time, before the demonstration and before Miss France just after watching Steve's video. I remember that afternoon. I was thinking hard on how could I positively change my life. I will share two of the crucial things I realized during this introspection with you all. 
the first thing I realized was that over the course of my life, apart from my immediate family, my surroundings would constantly change. People will constantly come and go in my life. In fact, the only person in the world with whom I'm certain to live with until I die is myself. So I might as well depend on a relationship, right? I decided to condition my mind to really think about myself before thinking about others. I remember that when I faced a difficult situation, I said to myself, I'm in control of my mind, so where there is a will, there is a way. With this principle, I have not failed on a single debate or interview, and all my personal projects end up in success. Thanks to this strong mentality, I took part in very impressive debates with experienced journalists and much audience. Sometimes I'm happy with what I've done, sometimes I'm not. During one particular debate, I did not live up to my own expectations, but it did not discourage me. Instead, it gave me the motivation to work twice as hard to do better next time. So I adapted my work to my expectations and I put in place routines to make sure I would live up to it. For example, it has been a year since I have taken on the habit of learning two words, expressions, biographies, or other things per day. Because if I want to prove my legitimacy to some 60-year-old politicians or journalists who doesn't really care for my young age, I have to increase my general culture tirelessly. To give you an idea of the knowledge I gained with this method, I could cite you the 100 capitals I know or even the government's entire organizational charts. But well, you get my point. I have been able to keep up with these habits because of the confidence I got from learning from my mistakes. I trusted and I worked hard to give myself the means to live up to my expectations. In my mind, I wanted to, so I could. Since then, with the conviction that where there is a will, there is a way, I have not failed on a single debate or interview, and all my personal projects end up in success. I must tell you that I am aware that we all are not equal when it comes to where there is a will, there is a way. I am aware that everyone is not equal for that. For example, a white man from a rich family will have more chances of succeeding than a veiled black and pro proletarian woman, regardless of their respective wills. If everyone, at its own level, must fight against this injustice, it is certainly not a valid reason for us to feel sorry for ourselves. Because to have a will is already a real door open to possibilities. In my case, in addition to my tenacious will, I had to work hard to, despite my young age and the fact that I'm a black woman, impose my credibility and get where I am today. But without the will, I would not have arrived anywhere because at the slightest obstacle, without this determination, I would have given up. Before I leave you, the last thing I want to say is that I went from being a victim of racism to being a fighter against racism. I went from the belief that I had no talent to the belief that I could help you find yours. However, my skin color and my intellectual faculties remain the same. Only my way of apprehending things has changed. I will close with a quote from Alain Leblay that inspired me a lot. In life, nothing is necessarily good or bad. Everything is a matter of point of view. <laughs>